prayer this morning. Have mercy this morning. Lord, I feel you moving on me. I'm standing here shaking, but I know you got me in your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my love. You brought me from Florida to Alabama. I didn't know what my journey was going to be, but you kept me in my family. You walked over, but we just walked over ourselves. St. Mark. And I don't try not to hold you long every time I say that, but I get longer. But I'm going to try to. Because we got communion, a few other things to transpire. And I need you to help me with this. In Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. 
Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 9, King James Version. In St. Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 9, the word speaks, and the people must listen. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open. And the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Let me read that right. Forgive me. And the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now pay close attention to verses 12 and 13. And immediately the Spirit driving him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days. Three things happened. I want you to look at this real close. Tempted of Satan and was with the wild beast. And then thirdly, the angels ministered unto him. Here is the reading of the precious word of God. I like to continue our discussion about kingdom thinking. I like to tag this text this morning with this thought. From worship to the wilderness. From the worship to the wilderness. One of the things I found very interesting about the church is that it is full of excitement and joy. And it allows you on Sunday morning to let go and let go. We love the moments that we share with each other every Sunday morning. We desire God's presence and we, we anticipate a worship like none other. We come together to just thank God for all of his blessings and all of his, the things that he has bestowed upon us. We acknowledge that the worship is a powerful and exciting experience. We acknowledge that the worship cannot transpire except you're willing to allow yourself to be used by God. So we're excited about the worship and we're excited about coming to church, those of us who truly love the Lord. Because we believe that if we can get to the worship experience, we can get some knowledge and some understanding that we are seeking, find answers to our problems, and hope for our helplessness, the worship. And that's how they were in the text. The text I just read to you, there was an exciting worship experience. John had laid the foundation in preaching the gospel of Jesus' arrival. He came before him and told dying men and women about there will be one who will come after me who will save you from your sins. Right. People heard about him. And here he is appearing at the Jordan River in a unique worship style experience. They are all there present and accounted for. Are y'all listening to this moment? Right. They're there, they're present, and they are accounted for. Who's there? John the Baptist is there. Who else is there? Jesus is there. Who else? The Holy Spirit. 
God the Father, and all of heaven's hosts, and all of those who were around there heard all what was said. It's interesting here that God spoke the way he spoke, and he saw a need to say in the scripture that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Here Jesus speaks, and God speaks, and he justifies, and he clears up all those rumors that have been going around about who Jesus' daddy was. Of course, there are people talking around the baby Jesus. They are suspicious of what took place. How is it that Jesus Christ is born and she has not consummated herself with her husband? How is this so? So the folk got to talk. So how can she be pregnant and then go, then go through the process of getting pregnant? They talked and they said, that's somebody else's baby. That's so-and-so baby. Same kind of way y'all talk today. <laughs> Spreading stuff we don't know. Participating in conversations we don't have no idea about. But here they are at Jordan River. And for the first time, nobody had to dial 1-800-who-my-baby-daddy is. <laughs> for the first time, daddy spoke. The real daddy stood up. You'd be surprised how many folk got babies running around and don't own them. But they look just like them. You can't run for what looked like them. Am I right about it? So here he is standing here at Jordan River and God speaks. He kills all the rumors, answers all the questions, and he makes this glorious, loud statement. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. What a worship experience that was. As they stood around that worship experience, John was there, and Jesus said to John, baptize him. John said, no. I can't, I'm baptized you, Jesus. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to even untie your shoes. Yeah. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. Here he is. So you, 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 you can do it. Go ahead and baptize me. He said, I'm not worthy. You see, what I, I think that we have to do to be effective worshipers is that we have to recognize that we're not worthy. To even be here. When you come into the church of God, many of you, we come in here acting like God owes us a faith. But God doesn't owe us anything. We owe him. Am I right about it? Sitting around that area, the excitement was obvious. The people were happy and shouting. The Holy Spirit descended upon them like a dove. And there you have it. A worship experience like none other. But we can't stay in the church all the time. We can't worship together all the time. We love the good sin. We thank God for the prayer. We're excited about being together. But worship ain't all. There comes the wilderness. You see, many of you, before we can even leave the church good, the devil gets started. Somebody said, the devil messed with me last week, and the devil will come to you this week. I, I think the devil will come sooner than that. When you hear a word that causes you to change your behavior, Satan has a way of getting involved. Are y'all listening to me? Won't he show up, church? Yeah. You, 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 if two or three are gathered, the devil will show up to mess that up. Yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm not discouraged because I know that I'm no match for the devil because he messes with me just like he 
messing with you. He comes in me just like he comes at you. But I'm going to ask for him because you think just because you've overcome one situation, you think that you've got it and you've got it together. No. The devil got a whole heap of more stuff to bring at you that you may not realize will come. Am I right about it? So here Jesus, after that worship experience around Jordan River, leaves. And the Bible says immediately, the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Three things happened. I'm going to let you go. Number one, he was tempted of the devil. Number two, he was with the wild beast. And number three, the angels came and ministered unto him. What I want you to understand today is that the devil does not like you. Turn to your neighbors and neighbor. The devil don't like me. And he sure enough don't like you. the Lord. By virtue of the fact that you have given your tithes and your offerings, you have read and heard scripture, that all would call Satan to want to mess you up. Are y'all listening to me? You see, the devil is against God. And I don't care how you put it. We're no match for him, but his obituary has already been written. Are y'all listening to me? So, 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 quit going around here and saying, saying the devil made you do it. The devil didn't make Jesus do anything. The devil tempted him, offered him, appealed to him. Enticed him, made him look at stuff, made him want stuff, tried to bring him down, and he even quoted scripture. Are y'all listening to me? What I'm trying to get you to understand today is that you can be in worship and have a good time, and just as soon as the worship is over, you come to them. Oh my God, he will mess you up. That's why sometimes I remember this preacher named Dr. Well Gamble. He never would look at the folk while he was preaching. He always looked up. So somebody asked him, said, why is it that while you're preaching, you're not looking at the people? He said, well, some of them sleep. Some of them look mean. Some of them don't like me. And some of them just plain don't want to be here. And that's why I don't look at the people because I want to be able to concentrate on the word of God. Whether they hear me or not. But Jesus here experienced his worship and went straight in the wilderness. And here the devil tempted him, tried to make him do things that he ought not to do, appeal to his flesh after he had been in the wilderness. 40 days. You see, what I've come to tell you today is that the devil will get you at your weakest point. When you're weak, he'll get in your head. He'll make you say things and think things and wonder things, ain't that but the devil. He'll make you do things and go places that you all not bring them but death. He will put thoughts in your mind and put dangerous words on your lips. Ain't nothing but the devil. But what you've got to do is remember that God is able to put the devil under your feet. Are y'all listening to me? Well, he said, he said, my enemies, and the devil is your enemy, shall be your footstool. You'll be able to eat food right in the presence 
of your enemies. Am I right about it? So he tempted him. He tempted him. He calls him, trying to get him to get off his game. But I, I come to tell you that you don't have to worry about the devil trying to get you off your game. Long as you got some Jesus game. So y'all don't understand to me. You, you, you don't have to worry about the devil trying to turn you up in the city. As long as you turn it up for Jesus Christ. If you got God in your heart, I declare everything will be all right. Then secondly, I'm almost there. He met the wild beast. There are times in our lives when we're wrestling against certain things. Yeah. We're wrestling against demons. We're wrestling against those hidden warfare angels that are trying to bring us down. Yeah. People who are fighting in their minds, trying to keep sanity. They're fighting because the devil don't want you to have a peace of mind. Right. People who are struggling with drugs are struggling because the devil wants you to feel that all hope is lost. People who are wrestling with their families are wrestling because the devil wants you to realize that families ain't nothing, so you don't need to depend on them. But I come to tell you that in life, we're going to be challenged by wild beasts. We're going to deal with drugs. We're going to deal with alcohol. We're going to deal with folk who don't like us on our job because we have realized that since Jesus has overcome the devil, we can overcome ourselves because we're more than conquerors. Am I right about it? We, we can be victorious because we have God. dangerous place. Thorns and thistles. Devils and yes. Demons exist. And if you're not careful, one of those demons will pop out anywhere and jump on you. Are y'all listening to me? And I, I tell you, when the devil jump on you, you know it. Because he'll make you talk and say stuff that you ought not say. Are y'all listening to me? How many of you know when the devil's on you? Let me see your hand. I know. I know when he messes with us. I know when he's bothering you. But I come to give you some advice. When the devil comes your way, rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ. Flee from him, shut all evil. And if you call on the name of Jesus, the devil will leave you alone. Am I right about it? Yeah. Jesus was out there dealing with a whole lot of stuff. And at that 40 day, he recognized the awesome power of God. He realized that God said, I, I will tell you. So what he did after those 40 days, he sent an angel. I believe angels are good for protection, for comfort, for guidance. For leaning and guiding and driving. For surgery. For the times when you are going through stuff, God sent an angel to watch over you. When I was in Troy, there was a song we used to sing all day. Y'all not with me. All day and all night. The angels are watching over me my Lord. All day and all night, the angels are watching over me. I don't know about you this morning, but every now and then, when I'm out there by myself, trying to get where I'm going,